So what we're going to look at here is how to draw covalent bonds. So very typical exam question would say use a dot cross diagram to show the bonding in a molecule of chlorine, Cl2, and it will say to show outer electrons only. The reason for this is if a lot of the time if you draw all the electrons then it becomes very very messy with all the inner shells in there. So the first thing we have to do then is to draw it each atom individually um, and show all the electrons which are there in the outer shell because we're showing outer electrons only. So what we have to do then is look to our periodic table and if we look to the periodic table we can find chlorine over in group 7. Now that's important for two reasons. The first thing we can do to calculate the number of electrons in the outer shell is look to the atomic number and if we look to the atomic number of chlorine we can see it's 17. So that must mean the electronic configuration would be two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and that leaves seven in the outermost shell. The other thing we can do but is we can remember that there's a link between the group number the element is in and the number of electrons in the outer shell. So because chlorine is in group seven, that must mean there are seven electrons in the outer shell. So that's all we need from our periodic table. So whenever then we come round to drawing out each atom individually, we draw out each atom, and then we want to put in the number of electrons in the outer shell. So you can see that I've drawn two chlorines. The reason for that is because in my question it says that the molecule of chlorine is Cl2, which means in the molecule of chlorine there are two chlorine atoms. So I'm going to draw each of my chlorines, and I'm going to put in seven electrons in each. So this is a dot cross diagram, so one of them I'm going to put in seven crosses. And in the other one I'm going to put in seven dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the first step. The next step then is to write down the number of electrons needed to complete the outer shell. Now, what we can see here by this statement is that the number of electrons needed to complete the outer shell is the number of pairs of electrons the atom will share. Now we'll come on to this a bit more in a second. So if we look at each atom then individually again, give ourselves some more space, we can see that the atom on the left has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 electrons. But you should know now that an atom has a complete outer shell whenever it has 8 electrons. So because this atom only has 7, that means it needs one more electron to fill its outer shell. The same is true of this atom because it's identical, they're both chlorine. So what we can say then is we can look at this and say right, the number of electrons that is needed to complete the shell is the number of pairs of electrons the atom will share. So because this chlorine here on our left hand side needs one electron, we can say that it needs to share one pair. The same is true for the other chlorine, it also is going to share one pair because it needs one electron to fill its outer shell. So that's our next step. Now we identify that the atoms both need to share one pair, we move on to step three. Step three says we overlap the atoms and share the required pairs. Now there's another wee side note here, it says if there are more than two atoms, the atom which requires the most pairs goes into the middle. In this case, we don't have more than two atoms, so we can ignore that for now. So overlap the atoms and share the required pairs. So if my two atoms here, what I have to do is I have to overlap them. So I put it much like there's a Venn diagram in mass, and the first thing I'm going to do is add in the required pairs. Now both of these chlorines I've said require one pair of electrons. So remember a pair is two. So a pair is a dot and a cross. Our next and final step is to ensure the total number of electrons is the same as at the beginning. So how we do that is looking at a diagram, we currently have one x and 1O. However, if we go back to the very start, 
we can see that we started off with seven x's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven dots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what we actually have to do then is, when we get to the very bottom, we have to ensure that there are seven x's and seven dots. So there were seven x's or crosses around this chlorine. That is one of those seven x's. That means we have to fill in the other six as one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the one that overlaps or seventh, and then the same with the dots. So it means that we now have the same number of electrons in total as we started off with at the beginning. Now the reason why this helps us is because if we look at each chlorine individually, these electrons in the middle which are being shared belong to both chlorine atoms. So that means that the chlorine on the left has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons, meaning that it has a complete inner shell. The same is true of the chlorine on the right, as the electrons in the middle belong to both 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons, showing that my outer shell is now complete. So that's our first example. Our second example is going to be a little bit more complicated. Okay, still the same process, but the question is maybe a little bit more difficult. It says, show the bonding in a molecule of water, H2O. So we're going to go through the same steps. So our steps are here. Apologies, it's slightly off there. So we're going to draw out each atom present individually. We're going to um, show the number of electrons there in the outer shell. We're going to go through the number of electrons here to complete the outer shell, the number of pairs will overlap the atoms, and then we'll make sure we have the same number of electrons at the end as we did at the beginning. So, firstly, this is water. So water is H2O, as it says on the top. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to draw out two hydrogens and one oxygen. So there we go, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Now if you look to the periodic table, hydrogen has one electron, so that means it will have one electron in its outer shell, and that is true for both atoms of hydrogen. If you look to oxygen, oxygen is in group 6, so it has six electrons in its outer shell. So that is drawing each atom present individually, showing the number of electrons in their outer shell. The next thing we're going to go on to then is working out and saying the number of electrons needed to complete the outer shell is the number of pairs of electrons the atom will share. Now, for my hydrogen, hydrogen is a bit of a strange case. Because hydrogen only has one shell, it actually only needs two electrons to fill that shell. Remember, the first shell is full when it has two electrons. So that means that this hydrogen and this hydrogen are going to need one pair shared to complete the outer shell because they need one electron. So we're going to write underneath it that our hydrogens needs one pair. Okay, and that's future what it's going to share. Now for our oxygen, our oxygen has six electrons, so that needs two more to complete that outer shell. So your oxygen is going to share two pairs. And that's our second step. Our third step, overlap the atoms and share the required pairs. Now, in this case, we do have more than two atoms. However, this little bit at the end says the atom which requires the most pairs goes into the middle. Now, we can see that the two hydrogens need one pair, but oxygen needs two pairs. So that means the oxygen is going to have to go into the middle. So what we'll do is we'll just sort of leave this here up at the top for a second. And what we'll do then is we will bring in some new atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. So to overlap, we put the atom which needs the most number of pairs into the middle. So in this case, that's oxygen. And the other atoms 
go around it. Now, don't try and do like the whole Olympic ring thing and join everything, okay? You should only ever have at the very most two atoms overlapping. So then we move on to our fourth and final step, which was to ensure that the total number of electrons was the same at the beginning. So, first of all, we have to overlap and fill in our required pairs. So we said that hydrogen, each hydrogen there, needed to share one pair of electrons. Okay, so we'll zoom in here because it's a bit hard to see. Okay, so each hydrogen needed to share one pair, and the oxygen needs two pairs. So what we'll do is, first of all, let's fill in the number of pairs of electrons on the hydrogens. So each hydrogen needs one pair. That's an X and an O. And the same for the other hydrogen, an X and an O. So in this case, what we've done is each hydrogen has one pair. But in doing that, that has given the oxygen the two pairs that it needs. So ensuring the number of electrons is the same as at the beginning, well, we can see that at the beginning we had 1x on each hydrogen. At the end, we have 1x on each hydrogen. Now they're being shared currently, but they are there on the hydrogen. We started off with 6 dots on the oxygen. We currently have 2. So it means that we have to add in another 4 around the oxygen. So we add them in. And that's our dot cross diagram complete. The hydrogen has a full outer shell because it has two electrons. And because that's the first shell, that means the first shell is now full on hydrogen. The oxygen has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons, showing that the outer shell of oxygen is complete. So to summarise those steps again, what we need to do, draw out each atom present individually, the, work out the number of electrons needed to complete the outer shell, that's the number of pairs of electrons the atom will share, overlap your atoms and share the required number of pairs, and finally, ensure that the number of electrons at the end in total is the same as what you had at the beginning. And that's how you draw covalent bonding.